Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video. Oh yeah, welcome back on board the 737-300 concept. A very, very interesting concept plane indeed that was around quite a while ago. Actually, this is uh, an official one by Boeing, right? I think Boeing designed this three-engined 747. Um, but unfortunately for the 747 series, it never became an actual thing, which again is quite unfortunate for the 747 series because you know, its main problem now is that it has four engines instead of two, meaning that it's, you know, a little less economical, a little bit less efficient, uses more fuel. Uh, this version might have gone quite a step further against that with only three engines, but that's a whole other story. We've already talked about this one. I think I've made actually like a whole video about this plane. So let's try a different version of a 747. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. I'm sure we all have seen airplane photoshops like this one, this is an A380. Well, it's, it used to be an A380, now it's an Airbus 8000. Oh, yeah, here we have another very interesting Photoshop of a plane. This is a cruising 747, quite literally. It's, uh, you know, it's cruising. Yeah, it's really a cruise ship with wings at this point. And, uh, well, guess what's gonna happen now? Yeah, we are, uh, we're gonna try flying this plane. I'm not joking at all. All right, this is the cockpit of the 747-8. Unfortunately, it is still 2D, but that's doesn't matter. What does matter is the outside of this actual aircraft, and it does look very inter very uh, interesting indeed. Now, actually, this is a life-size uh, cruise ship that's literally been put onto a 747-8 body. As you can tell, the 747-8 compared to a cruise ship isn't particularly large. Yeah, this does look actually very accurate when it comes to, you know, the sizes and all that. Looks very good. Uh, I doubt that this will be able to fly, but I think it might just do that. Let's put the engine to full power. Hopefully, the developer of this plane didn't set up the physics properly so that we can take off which may or may not happen there we go though we have uh unset the parking brakes and we're actually moving we are moving indeed 120 knots these engines must be super powerful we're uh very quick 140 knots 160 knots and uh we need to take off now i mean genuinely come on please just take off oh my goodness there's something ahead there's something there's an obstacle oh cruise ship cruise ships crash that's not good all right let me try to spawn into the air actually and see if this plane can fly out here because that really did not work out at all all right there we go we'll come back on board oh my goodness i think we need a lot more speed in order to actually carry all this stuff there we go let's go for 400 knots and i barely have control of this plane is my joystick broken or something oh there we go i think we have gained control we need at least 430 knots of speed which is uh interesting indeed all right looking uh looking pretty good huh the 747-8 cruising edition is actually cruising around let's put the landing gear of this ship out which we cannot do properly because we're too fast all right i mean we have to m maintain at least 640 knots to get this huge plane flying but let's go ahead and crash then so that we can stop somewhat and now we have a crashing cruise ship all right i think the airplane capabilities of this cruise ship is granted oh well, it does work yeah probably but let's also test out the water capabilities of this cruise ship all right then let's just come in for a nice water landing here in this 748 cruise and by the way, why are there always balloons here? Like, also so low to the ground. Why? Okay, whatever. Let's just go ahead and land here on water. We almost struck a balloon. Here. Okay, let's go ahead and touch down on the water as smoothly as possible since we're super fast. So smoothness is the answer. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that was not good. All right, now we have a cruise ship on fire, but we are actually... It does float on water, apparently. There we go. Now we have a perfectly working cruise ship. Well, the engines are dead, but if the jet engines were to still work, then we would have a, uh, a perfectly functioning cruise ship there. I have no idea who actually came up with this in the first place. I mean, definitely this was inspired by the photoshops that we have floating around around the internet. But I do wonder who came up with the idea in the first place to photoshop a cruise ship into 747. And also, who made it so unrealistic? Here the, you know, size comparison is very small compared to compared to what it would actually look like in real life. If, if you actually were to put a cruise ship on a 747, the cruise ship is quite a bit bigger. Now, by the way, there's a wildfire raging down there. Just explain things, right? All right, then. But for this video, we've actually got some more planes to check out. Yeah, this is the MD-80, a very, very classic aircraft. Very, very nice one. I do like it quite a lot, even though it's it's pretty dead right now. That was a big voice crack. There we go. As you can tell, it does fly quite nicely still. And, well, you, you shouldn't actually underestimate this plane's size. It's quite large. It does fit quite a few passengers. Let's check out the cabin as well while we were at it. There we go. I mean, this is still a regional 
original plane, but you know, it does fit a few passengers in. Let's check out that takeoff that we're about to do. There we go. Oh, that was a tail strike. I think we could hear that in the background. All right. Now, what kind of conversion could we do to this plane? Yes, yeah, you can see down here, there's also something called the McDonnell Douglas MD-100, which is quite a higher number compared to MD-80. So let's see what this is going to be. All right. Welcome aboard the, the MD-80. It's now got two wings and it's quite longer. As you can tell, it is indeed longer. It is very long, actually. <laughs> this one is as long as like an A350. And that's a huge, that's what she said. What does the cabin look like? What is it? it is actually longer in here. Okay, it, I think it is. All right. Okay. Now a very long MD-80. Kind of fly. Two engines still. I think these are the same engines as before. Let's see if these are able to carry this huge plane now. Yeah, this is not a very easy task for these mediocrely powerful engines. Okay, let's go ahead and take off. Oh, that was a tail strike again, but the plane is actually flying. It does fly pretty well. Let's put in the gear without crashing. I sat without that was very close to crashing, actually. And there we go. We are uh, we are flying. The MD-80 Longer Edition is indeed flying, and it's not, it's not about to... Oh, well, the whole plane is falling apart, and there's a wing that's just floating. All right, never mind. Okay, something else that I've come up with is uh, another type of MD-80. I would call it the MD-80 Super. All right. Yeah, I, I saved it as McDonnell Douglas MD-8000. Is that 800,000? Oh, yeah, that is 800,000. I'm sorry. All right, 800,000. Let's see what you can what you can do for us. Oh, oh, wow. All right. Now this MD-80 is actually just as long as the you know usual MD-80, but it has two wings and two two more engines. Oh, and these are super powerful. Why are they so powerful? Jesus Christ. That was actually pretty unexpected. I don't think I changed the uh, power of the engines, but apparently they are very strong, especially since they're four now. These are very fast, very powerful, very much too much power for a small aircraft like this. I mean, it's not particularly a small aircraft, but you know, this plane is still very much overpowered. Oh, wow. Well, this has badly gone wrong. Jesus Christ. Did you just see that? I think we did go rocket mode for a second there. Let's check out that one. Yeah, there we go. Since I was trying to do an aileron roll and noticed that it was going to be too late, I pushed full power into the engines and that got us rushed out of the deadly situation. And it became an even more deadly. I think we even blacked out, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, this is after all a rocket engine plane. Jesus. Only two of the four engines are actually rocket powered, but uh, that does give the plane quite a lot of power still, right? We just look at the altitude indicator. Just freaking out at this point. There we go. Come on. Can we get higher. We're right now flying at 72,000 feet. Higher than any passenger plane really has ever gone. I mean, there's the Concorde that went up to like 55,000 or a bit higher than that, but we haven't really gone higher than that in passenger travel, so this is interesting. 100,000 feet. We are starting to enter the first stage of space very soon, and once we go higher than like 400,000 feet, we have genuinely left planet Earth. There we go. This is uh, the MD-800,000 for you, I guess. I don't know. Alright, what is this now? I generally don't know. I, I, I literally just, just found this aircraft in my aircraft selection menu. It does look very interesting. It's not a it's not a special conversion of any plane necessarily, but it is a special plane itself. I mean, this plane, it has a wing that is facing forward. Very interesting design there. Let's go ahead and take off. That was my phone. All right, it's not particularly fast, like, at all. Even though I think even my Cirrus SR20 is more powerful than this plane. Maybe because of the forward-facing wing design, question mark? Maybe not. All right, yeah, I, I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it's a very interesting concept indeed. I mean, you know, forward-facing wing aircraft, they do work quite well. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.